Uh, hello, this will be a demonstration of Proposition 16 from Book 8 of Euclid's Elements, which says that if a square number does not measure a square number, then neither will its side measure its side. But if, on the other hand, conversely, the side does not measure the side, then neither shall the square number measure the square number. This is what we would call the contrapositive of Proposition 814. Instead of the square measuring the square, we're dealing with the case where the square does not measure the square. And instead of me the side measuring the side, the side does not measure the side. Regardless, we're given the same thing. We're given two square numbers, A and B, and we're also given their sides, C and D. So that C squared makes A and D squared makes B. Now, the enunciation containing two different givens, there's obviously going to be two different givens that we have to deal with. We're either going to have the number A not measure the number B, or the number C will not measure the number D. If first the number A does not measure the number B, what we want to prove is that neither will the number C, which is the side of A, measure the number D, which is the side of B. But if, on the other hand, we are given that the number C does not measure the number D, what we want to prove is that the number A, which is the square of C, does not measure the number B, which is the square of D. Let's deal with that first case. If the number A does not measure the number B, we want to say that the number C does not measure the number D. For if this is not the case, then the number C will measure the number D. But if the number C does, does measure the number D, then the square on C will measure the square on D. That's just Proposition 814, that if the side measure the side, the square will also measure the square. So that because C measures D, C squared will measure D squared. But we know C squared is A and D squared is B. So because C measures D, A has to measure B. But this is contrary to what we were given. We were given that the number A does not measure the number B. So what we end up having to say, if the number C does measure the number D, is that the number A both does not and does measure the number B, which is obviously impossible. And so we can conclude that the number C does not measure the number D. If on the other hand, on the converse, we are given that the number C does not measure the number D, we want to prove that the number A does not measure the number B. For if it does, for if the number A does measure the number B, then we know that the side of A will measure the side of B. That is, again, Proposition 814, but instead the first part of it, instead of the second part. So because the number A measures the number B, the side of A will measure the side of B. But we know the side of A is C, and we know the side of B is D. So because A measures B, C also measures D. But again, this is contrary to what we were given. We were given that the number C does not measure the number D. And so if the number A does measure the number B, what follows is that the number C both does not and does measure the number D, which is obviously absurd. And so we can conclude that the number A does not, in fact, measure the number B. And this is all that we wanted to prove, which means we're done with the proposition, therefore, etc. Q, E, D. A fairly straightforward proposition. We've seen this sort of um, logic before. This is simply how you prove contrapositives. Um, before I end the video, I'll just give an example of it, even if it might be a little obvious. So the square number 4 does not measure the square number 9. What then follows from this is that the square root of 4, which is 2, does not measure the square root of 9, which is 3. And this obviously holds, so you see that the first part of this proposition does hold. But if, on the other hand, we're given that 2 does not measure 3, then 2 squared will not measure 3 squared. That's what we can conclude from this proposition. 2 squared, then, is 4. 3 squared is then 9. So 4 does not measure 9, and we can easily verify that. So we see that this proposition in its entirety holds true. That's all I've got to say about this one, so I'll end the video here and move on to Proposition 817.